Hey everybody, it's Ryan. Welcome back to How Farms Work. We're about to send the Case Magnum 210 back to St. Joseph, back home. So I wanted to do a quick video walking around it, talking about it a little bit, um, what I think of it, kind of my opinion on Case, and my opinion actually mostly just on this tractor, not as on Case as a whole. And uh, just kind of talk about some things about this tractor that I like, some things that I don't like about it, and um, just kind of walk around it a bit. Uh, so this is my first time actually driving a case uh, on the farm, getting to use it. I wish that we could have gotten to use it for like tillage, something more, something of a more heavier application. But unfortunately, I only had it for a limited amount of time. So the two things that we did with it were haul manure and cut brush with the Rhinowag 4155. And uh, it performed great. The tractor itself handles spectacularly. I love the way that it rides, and um, overall, it seems like a very good tractor. So I'm gonna come up in the cab now and talk about some things up in there. Uh, before I do so, I just wanna say that anything that I do say in this video, take with a grain of salt, because there is no opinion greater than your own, especially when it comes to tractors. My opinion on tractors, that as long as they get the job done, and as long as they are reliable, those are the two big things that I'm looking for when I look at a tractor. And in the time that we've had this tractor, you know, I haven't ruled out anything with it. It seems like a very nice tractor. There are just some small quirks with it that I would change about it if I could. So let's climb up into the cab. So this tractor sits very high, which is a good thing. More visibility, you're sitting up higher above everything, you're looking down, and um, especially with stuff behind you, it puts you above everything. So a high sitting tractor isn't necessarily all that bad. Compared to the 7600, if you look over, uh, my head is pretty well in line with the roof of the cab. And that tells me that this tractor would not fit in some of our sheds. So that's something to take into account whenever you're looking to buy a tractor. Will it fit into where you want to put it? Will it be able to pull your implements out of certain sheds? Stuff like that. So I'm gonna pull this out where I can have more lights to show you guys what I'm talking about. I have rigorously, and I mean rigorously, tested the AC in this tractor. <laughs> One of the things that I really like about this tractor is the turning radius. Although it is a mechanical front wheel drive tractor, it doesn't seem like that has hindered the tractor at all when it comes to turning radius. So we're up in the tractor now, and there's a couple things that I wanted to talk about. Um, a lot of them are design choices that I think could have been done better. Um, others are things that I like about it. First thing that I notice is that there's a lot of room in here. Uh, there's a lot of headroom, not once during my time of running this, when I hit a lot of bumps and when I was mowing those hillsides, uh, not once did my head even come anywhere close to the roof of the cab. So, like I mentioned before, this tractor sits very high. It really doesn't waste any space. I really like how they have a windshield wiper on the side of the cab, as well as to the rear and front. However, I noticed that they don't have one to the left anywhere. Um, I guess I kind of understand why that would be. Uh, however, if you have it over here, you'd think that they would have come up with a design where they could have had it all the way around the cab. Um, and just not left this side of the cab left out. I mean, even this window over here, you can't even open up for any reason. Up along the roof of the cab, we have the radio along with a storage cubby. This, I really, really like. And they also have a 12 volt charger up there, more accessory, more accessory outlets than I've ever seen on any John Deere, which is great. Um, but I can't speak for all John Deeres because they make all different kinds of makes and models. That's pretty much it for the roof of the cab. I'm not totally sure what this up here is for. Uh, we got all of our speakers up here. One thing that I'm noticing that is a stark difference to like the 8235R is that there isn't any air outlets up here. So this tractor is 117,000. And for a tractor this price, I mean, it is a new tractor. I'm not totally sure what year it is. I would think that they would be able to relocate some of the air vents to anywhere other than the steering column. So this is where all of our vents are, at least all the ones that I've seen. Now as I'm looking around, I actually just noticed that there's actually an air vent right here. So I will give them some credit to that. 
Um, I think that's pretty much the only other one that I see. So that one's just kind of out of place. You think they would have, I mean, there's plenty of room down in the corner post, but that's just me. Looking back here, we've got this little storage space. Why isn't, there we go. So lots of room in there. Radio removal aid, nice to know. So it's a lot, nice little storage space. It is kind of unhandy to get back in there, to try to reach anything that's in there. Um, would have preferred something that kind of folds down, reveals all the storage space to me. But the air intake is down here. Very familiar with that design. And the John Deere's pretty much goes to the same place. The cabin air filter sits nicely underneath the cab right by the steps coming up in. Uh, that's another thing that I really like on the 8235R. The cab filter sits along the roof line. I'm not totally big into that because you kind of have to shimmy up on the side of the cab uh, as you're removing it or risk getting a ton of dust inside the cab itself. This tractor comes with a bunch of shades, which is awesome. We got them to the front right and back. And the left side over there is kind of ignored, but no matter. Another design choice that I'm not totally sure why they made was that they put the light controls right over here. And it's the kind of a cheap little switch to turn all of them on. And then we have our flasher controls on the other side of the steering column. Why you wouldn't put those next to each other in the first place, I don't know. I mean, there's even a spot for it right there above the light switch. However, in a newer tractor, I would have expected that they would kind of condense all of the controls for the tractor into one location. So we have this control panel back here. I mean, another switch would have fit nicely right here for the lights. And um, that leaves the ignition switch, which if I had a choice for the ignition switch, I mean, up front isn't a bad spot. I know that Massey has them on the back cab or back uh, corner post here. But anywhere, I mean, even up on the front corner post would be a good spot because we're farmers. We don't like bending over all that much. We do a lot of it in our everyday lives. And one thing that I noticed is that I had, as I had to reach up to turn the four-way flashers on is that you do put a lot of stre like strain in your back reaching down just to turn those on and off. So something that I do like about this tractor, they put the flashers right up here and as you go through your turn, they'll actually shut off. Just like that. And I don't believe the 82 does that. That's a really nice feature that um, I really like about it. However, on the right hand side here, we have the engine control and we have all of our switches. So something that I noticed is that for the auto steer, because I believe this tractor does come ready for auto steer, um, is that your controls for it are hidden under there. Why they wouldn't have that open, I'm not totally sure. Um, but that is something, I mean, I would have preferred all these controls to be out in the open rather than me having to uh, mess with them. But maybe they just think that you don't, you shouldn't be playing with them all that much. Um, I guess I kind of understand. However, if you're using the automatic turnaround, that would be something that I would think that you would be using occasionally. So under here, we've got more of our controls for the three-point. We've got an auto steer button there. Um, kind of an unhandy spot, I guess you could press it with your thumb. Controls for the three points. We've got our SCVs up here, nice and large. I like how they've laid those out along with timers for the hydraulics as well. So this is for a monitor, I would assume, and it should come with a display that the tractor can use for auto steering. Uh, whether or not this tractor actually comes with it, I'm not totally sure. We've got a corner post display here. Uh, this is very nice. I like the way that it's set up, as well as the buttons over here to kind of customize it to your liking. So we've got our PTO switch over here. Um, that's kind of just placed a little bit away from everything else, but it's really not a bad spot to have the PTO switch in. You're not gonna accidentally hit it. Um, at least not that I can tell, and you have to pull it up to engage it. So I like that. What do we have here? 
Uh, 12 volt outlet there. Uh, I don't know why that plug is just sitting freely on there. If this was my tractor, I'd lose it in about 10 seconds. Uh, I do kind of like this design. What I don't like is that every time you want to use it, you have to pull the steering wheel back out. Because every time you push that button and you push it up, it falls back in. So I'm not totally sure what they could have done different there. Uh, I do like John Deere's design where they have a little switch where all you have to do is just press this and it pretty much just falls down into your lap. Um, overall, using this tractor has been a very positive experience for me. I mean, I do like the way that it rides. I like the way that it drives. Um, it's very maneuverable. It's very stable. Of course, it does have the duels on it. And um, I can see why people like Case. I have just one big gripe left for the cab, and this is probably a pretty big one for me. Again, not totally sure why they went with a, what seems like a cheaper design, but one thing that I noticed in this cab is that there's a lot of cheap plastic in here, uh, such as on the light switch. It just seems like that's kind of cheap. They could have done a little bit better with it. I mean, it seems like they kind of cheaped out with the air vents. Um, Maybe it's just the model tractor that it is. I don't know, maybe their larger ones are a little bit nicer or maybe their newer, newer ones are. Um, however, looking at the hand control here, if you look really close, you'll notice that it's made out of a very cheap plastic and it's pretty much just a layer of chrome. It seems like it's dipped in chrome and that chrome has already started to chip off before we even got the tractor. Uh, it took about maybe five minutes of driving this tractor before I realized that that was there. And um, it's just something that I don't really like because this is about the second most used spot in this tractor other than like the seat. Uh, when you're a farmer and your hands are in the tractor, they're in two places. They're going to be on the steering wheel and they're going to be on the engine, on the throttle. And by cheaping out right there, I mean... Now, whoever buys this tractor is going to have to deal with kind of a rough surface there. And I'm not really just all that crazy about it. I've been told a lot that the Case and New Hollands are pretty much the exact same tractor. Um, we demoed a New Holland T7 315 in 2016, and I absolutely loved that tractor. The hand control seemed like it was really high quality. It was really uh, secure in where it was. This one, it just seems like it's really cheap and just kind of, I don't know. I mean, to me, it just seems like the New Hollands are built a little bit to a higher standard, um, but I don't have a frame of reference for why this tractor would be built different, like the hand controls. Maybe some of the New Hollands do have hand controls like this. I honestly do not know. Um, all I know is that the New Holland that we had used had a very nice control, and that tractor was CVT. So now I'm gonna shut the tractor off. We're gonna hop outside and kind of walk around the tractor a little bit. Um, I'll just share some of my final thoughts on it. I like how they situated the def tank. If you listen closely, you can hear the def coming back in from the engine. So since this tractor has def, what it does is it drains the def fluid from the engine back into the tank. And the reason it does that is because in the winter, what'll happen is the def fluid will freeze in the lines and i'm pretty sure you'll end up with some cracked lines if that happens however it is perfectly safe if it freezes inside the def tank i do like that they have this plate here under the tanks um, you can use that as a stepping pad uh, to get out on front of the tractor if you need to clean the windshield at all or if you're working underneath the hood and you need to get up on there it's great now, this is the battery door one thing that I really do like about this is that there's really no question on how it comes off there. Uh, with the 7600, it's kind of finicky to get the battery uh, cover back on there, and it's just kind of like a weirdly shaped cover. Whereas with this, it's a nicely laid out door. You take these off, and it just pulls right out of there, and putting it back in takes about 30 seconds. So we've got the duels here. I mean, the duels have already started to chip their paint. That's a little bit worrying to me, but again, I don't really know what this tractor was used for before it got here. So I'm not gonna quick judge about it, but um, moving on to the back end of the tractor. Here we're looking at the SCVs, lots of plugs. The more plugs, the better, absolutely love that. Um, back here, 
I like how they have the SCVs labeled and they're easy, easily accessible. So I can be standing on this side of the tractor and reach over and plug the other side in fairly easily. Um, with some of the John Deere's that we have, I mean, they're kind of spaced out far apart. And um, I do like how they have them situated. So we've got our cab suspension under there. Uh, another nice feature. Uh, it was a smooth ride. Uh, it's not as smooth as some of the TLS John Deere tractors that I've taken a ride in. We've got switches up on each of the fenders for raising, raising and lowering the three point. That should be almost standard these days. And probably my one last big gripe about this tractor um, is the markers that are over the duals. So here we've got the markers. So what I noticed on these markers is that since they're bolted on, they don't have any give. And if they run into something that has less give than they do, uh, I'm pretty sure you could break those right off of there. So that is something I'm not really crazy about. I think they, they could have come up with a better design. And I hate to keep referencing John Deere on, on it, but I really like how the 82 design just has that folding back design, whereas this has folds, just folds up. So that's pretty much it for my review of the case. I would have a little bit more input on it as far as how it pulls and stuff like that if I had gotten to use it for a little bit longer. Um, but those are just kind of my short one weekend mixed feelings on it. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Be sure to check out all of our other ones. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. All how farms work. And with that, I'll see you next time.